our this was the first uh, speaker speech of the day. Uh, our speaker comes to us from Buenos Aires. He's a sommelier and a bartender, and he is also the cocktail ambassador for the House of Angostura. Martin Tumimo. Welcome, everybody. So um, today we are here uh, to present uh, the art of Suiza. So um, this conversation we're going to have, uh, it's sponsored by the House of Angostura. So uh, it's a huge honor to be with you here uh, and have the opportunity to share with you a little uh, what we're doing today and uh, what all about Suiza is, okay? So uh, my name is Martin Tumino. Uh, I am from Argentina. Uh, so I'm really sorry for my bad Spanish. For my bad English, I mean, if I uh, if I miss some words, uh, you might help me, okay? Um, so I'm the cult ambassador for the House of Angostura, and uh, part of my job today is to promote um, everything related to this beautiful tool that um, it's uh, so linked to the Caribbean culture, and uh, it's kind of not everybody knows what what the swizzle is. So this is why we are here, because we want to share with the world uh, what this tool means to us for uh, Latin American bartenders. So um, if you want some extra information about Swizzles and about uh, what we're doing, uh, you can follow us on Instagram, you can follow Swizzlegram, and uh, there you will see some of the campaigns that right now um, are on, like the Share a Swizzle campaign, that it's a beautiful thing we're doing, visiting bars all over the world. Um, and where there's a bartender that never uses Swizzle, and where there's a bartender that doesn't have the tool, because, so the tool is not available worldwide, and uh, we will talk about this. Uh, we, we go and we share a Swizzle with them. So if you don't have Swizzles at your bars, and uh, you want to know a little more about um, the tool, the technique, the culture, and the cocktails behind it, please let us know, please follow us, and just drop us a message. We are there to uh, answer you and helping you with anything you need, okay? So, uh, there's a few hashtags like Swissology. So this is, uh, we're playing around with this nice word, you know? It's like, so mixology, or cocktails, but with Swiss. So usually if you also find me in social media, you will see that I'm always Swiss with drinks and I always have a tool with me, right? Um, and the House of Angostura is also about to launch the Swizzle Week, so we want to do this uh, not only in North America, but also in some other countries. So again, if you have bars and you want to get into, get into this, uh, please uh, write, okay? And uh, well, just Swizzle, that's our main hashtag, because everything is about just Swizzling. And uh, the Swiss Real is another cool project that I would like to share with you. It's uh, we're gonna be in some uh, uh, cities across the United States, starting um, a competition of Swiss. Okay, so this is something that it's growing. So if you are interested to get into the competition, you can also contact us. Okay, so let's get started. So Swiss is not just a word. Um, the word Swiss, Swizzle first see print in the classical dictionary of the vulgar tone in 1786 and refers to a drink from the 1760s that comes from North America and contains rum. So this is important because when, when we think about Swizzles, we think about rum. So uh, for me and for a lot of people, Swizzle is a magic word. Just listen to the word, Swizzle. It sounds magical. Um, we don't know exactly where the word come from, but uh, we know uh, that in the early 19th century, it was a word that people were using, okay? Um, as a noun, we know that uh, it's a mix of, uh, mix of alcoholic drinks, especially fruity, and contains rum and bitters. So again, this is another key element, swizzles, need to have rum and need to have bitters, okay? Well, everything in life should have a little of bitterness, uh, which is one of the main flavors. Um, 
and as a bird, we know that um, swizzle it's to steer with a wooden stick. Okay. Um, I I put this quote because uh, my good friend uh, Raymond Edwards, the chief mixologist of the House of Angostura, he always says that swizzle is a fusion of things that come together perfectly to create something unique and special. So swizzles are something unique, something beautiful, something special. Well, uh, in pop culture, let's say, uh, this gentleman also is using the word uh, and he refers to swizzle uh, as something sweet, something awesome, something radical, something fabulous. So, in some point, swizzle it's a word that it's used to express good fortune. So, swizzle for all of you guys, okay? This is a tool that comes from a tree. According to David Bondrich, I am, I am extremely honored to know that he's going to do a presentation today here. Um, according to him, the first tool used to make cocktails was a wooden tool. In fact, it was a muddler. Um, and what I say this, because um, a wooden tool was the first tool I ever used in my life to make a cocktail. Um, the, that makes a lot of sense that I'm talking today about wooden tools. Um, so I didn't have too much money when I started bartender. So um, I'm from Argentina, you know, in my country you have to be creative. We don't have a lot of things. We don't have access to tools, you know, liqueurs and different stuff. So I made my first bartending tool with this. So you know what it is? So this is the stick that goes in a, I don't know, the word, you know? What's the word? Plunger? Okay, the plunger. Blur. Yeah. Blur. Pl plunger. <laughs> okay. So I swear that I never use this as a plunger. Okay. So you can be you can be good. But uh, it's just to show you that uh, um, as as a, as a tool. I mean, you can use this to break sugar. You can use this to stir a drink or even green spice. Okay. So we can say that the first tool to use, use to make cocktails was a wooden tool. So wooden tools are very important in cocktail culture. Of course, with time, uh, things get a little more sophisticated, so of course tools start to improve. Um, but it happens today, and of course it happened to the prehistoric bartender toolkit, that uh, we borrow tools from the kitchen. So bartenders use knives, strainers and spoons, and all these tools could come from the kitchen. But there was a wooden tool, one specific wooden tool, that was used uh, in the Caribbean kitchen of the Lesser Antilles, and it was used as a whisk, to whisk food and to whisk drinks. So, we know that from the Peruvian Amazonas, through Colombia and Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago, Martinique, and the natives use wooden tools extracted from trees as kitchen utensils to prepare food and mix it drinks. So this tool comes long before the Spanish, long before the British or the French were in the Caribbean, alright? Uh, so we believe the tool belongs to the Caribs or the Calinago, okay, the natives of of South America and Central America. Um, we know they were settling north of Colombia, northeast of Venezuela, Trinidad, um, Guyana. So, in some point, it's possible that part of the culture spread even more to the south. So far, we had found swizzle sticks in the Peruvian Amazon, but I am 80% sure because of my trips and things I have been told with people that if we go surf more to the south, we will find more Swiss sticks. So I will show you some of the Swiss sticks I have with me today. So natives use wooden tools to cook, okay, with food. Well, sometimes they were specifically, <laughs> you know, uh, whisking uh, food and beverages. They were 
eating some different things, but we know we, they use wooden tools. So what is a swizzle? Uh, so the swizzle, it's a wooden tool that comes from a tree called the swizzle stick tree. Okay? Also known, or let's say the scientific name is the Guararibea turbinata. Okay? That's the wood used to make swizzle sticks. This tree is native from the Caribbean uh, and the branches, it has branches with twigs that radiate out in a 90 degree starburst pattern from the mother branch. So this is the where the place I mean, where you can understand the shape of the tool. Okay. Uh, currently, the main plantations of swizzle sticks uh, are in Martinique, um, where most of the swizzle sticks that we can find right now in the market come from. But Peru and Trinidad and Tobago has their own swizzle sticks from trees of the family of the Guaranibea turbinata, okay? In Martinique, the tree is also known as Lele tree. More than a tree is a bush, uh, usually it doesn't grow more than uh, six meters in height. Uh, it's very easy to recognize because it has very big leaves, they are rigid and crispy, and usually in the trunk, well, in this picture, maybe you cannot see the color, but it's a really a reddish color, and it has white dots on it, okay? Um, each intersection, you know, has exactly five branches that go horizontally in radius. Okay, again, here's the, the shape of the tool. The, the, you know, the, 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 the tool is famous for this shape. You will see after that I have some other uh, Swiss sticks that has less twigs, okay? But uh, we will talk about this. So, the branches, the twigs, start in each intersection, okay? And between one intersection and the other, this, there's just trunk, all right? So, you cut just upper the intersection, okay? So you get the shape, then you peel the tool, and you get the Swiss stick, right? So this is this was a tree before being a tool. Um, the, a, a, a very nice detail is that uh, you cannot cut the tree in any moment you want because uh, for the natives, in this case for the Creole people, there's a belief that you have to cut the tree in a specific phase of the of the moon. Okay. So usually it has to be that phase when the moon is growing. You know, it's something about the earth, it's something uh, very mystic, okay? It's like, oh, my mom used to say that I cannot cut my hair if the moon is on a different, um, in a different phase, in a lower phase, because my hair won't, won't grow. So this is something very popular in the Caribbean. You can see the rush a little better in that, in this photo. So, we're talking about the Guararibea. The Guararibea, it's, um, it comes from the family of the Malvaceas. So, Malvaceas are trees like the tree from the hibiscus, the tree uh, with the cotton, the okra, and the cacao tree. Okay, so there's more than 98 spice species of Guararibea, and they're all pretty aromatic. They have a beautiful perfume. Um, but in the case, the specific case of the Guaranibea turbinata, once it gets dried, it has a beautiful curry reminiscence. So, is, is anybody not familiar at all with the Swizzle stick? Can you raise your hand? Ne never? Okay. So I will give you some Guaranibea turbinata Swizzle sticks, so you can pass it around and you can smell it. Here you go. Please pass it. The aroma is beautiful. I mean, uh, there's people that think that if you use it in food or drinks, part of the aroma is going to the flavor of the cocktail or the preparation you're doing. But so far, we cannot say, like, you know, in a, we, we cannot measure like scientific, you know, how much flavor is it it's in part to the drink or the food, okay? But so far, we know, because we're running some tests, that if you 
Green, the, 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 the Guadalivia Turinata wood, uh, you can do a beautiful incense. Incense is what word? Incense, yeah, and it smells beautiful. So in Martinique, the tool is called Volele, Voilele, okay? In Creole, uh, Lele means steering or mixing, and Voix means in French wood. So Voilele is steering with the wood instead. Voilele means swizzle. Uh, it's important to say that this tool is not a uh, Industrialized, industrialized tool. It's uh, something that you have to make your own, I and mean, it's something handmade. So uh, the people who works uh, making Swiss sticks, it's people that has a very important relation uh, with nature, and they do this as part of the culture. Okay. Usually, uh, you will find like very like old people, you know, old ladies doing this in their house, and they had like incredible swizzle sticks from different shapes and sizes. So it's important to not confuse swizzle stick with cocktail stirrers because here in the United States people call swizzle to plastic cocktail stirrers. So we are a swizzle, we are not a cocktail, cocktail stirrer per se, you know, the plastic thing you put in a drink, alright? So what about other Swiss Not just the Guaranivea Turbinata. Um, so the Guaranivea Turbinata can be found in different countries in the Caribbean. In this part is when I say, okay, so you know that there's different type of oranges. Okay, so there's oranges in Argentina, there's Spanish oranges, uh, there are no oranges from California. They're all oranges, but they taste different and they look a little bit different. So Swiss sticks, with the Swiss sticks, it happens to happen the same. Um, so the tool not only belongs to Martinique, it also belongs to all the Caribbean, right? In fact, for example, if you go to Trinidad, in Trinidad we made a beautiful Swiss stick from the cocoa tree. Sadly, I don't have a big one, but you can tell that I have one on my head. Okay, so this is made from the cocoa tree. So you will see that it has just three twigs, three branches, okay? Also, there's another variety called Guadalivea funeris that you can find in Belize, El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, that also makes a uh, very nice Swiss tree, okay? So this belongs to the Caribbean. And in this part, I have to say something that uh, it's like, very important to me, uh, and the relationship I have with this tool is that uh, for many years uh, I was when I when I lived in Argentina I was looking for to learn how to do harshe or buying Japanese beautiful jiggers or jarai mixing glasses and learning techniques that uh, wasn't for a different place. So at one point of my life I I, I, I discovered myself saying okay so. I'm not Japanese, I'm from Latin America. What I'm doing, making these techniques, you know, trying to show off or, you know? So, when I discovered this tool, I understand something that it's very important, that uh, today, uh, cocktail culture is not just about to give the best experience, because the best experience is super important, and if you guys, we're uh, visiting different trade shows and assisting to classes, you will see that everything will end on service because what we want to do is people happy. But now we need to add something else with the Swiss that you need ident identity. If what you're doing has no identity, there's a, it's, it's, a, it's an empty space there, okay? So how I'm going to show uh, my style, my passion, what I do in a cocktail, if I don't put a little of my culture on it. So, uh, Swizzle, Swizzles, uh, in that point, represent the culture of the Caribbean and of Latin America, okay? And we want to share it with the world. Okay, so, we want to share this with the world, so 
let's talk about these lizards around the world. Because this is not just from the Caribbean. This belongs to the world and has to be shared with the world. If you go to Portugal, you're gonna get the mixolot. Okay? So when we divide the world between Spanish and Portuguese, you know, uh, when uh, Christopher Columbus discovered uh, America, the Spanish made a little mistake and they just left like a little tiny piece of Brazil to the Portuguese. So the Portuguese get there and they kind of control all South America. So Brazil speak Portuguese uh, and that's why a little mistake from the Spanish. Okay? I can say this, I, my, my roots are Spanish, okay? So uh, we usually make these kind of mistakes. Um, and it's, it's also a nice, uh, you know, it's nice information because, for example, the, uh, one of the, our, our founders, one of the founders of uh, the House of Angostura, uh, Mr. Fernandez, was Portuguese. And if you go to the Caribbean, you're going to see that there's some other Rembrandts, like for example, an important Rembrandt in uh, Antigua, that is also Portuguese. So Portuguese has some relationship with us, you know? So the mezzalote, it's the tool that you need to use to make poncha. So poncha is the, is the cocktail from Madeira. Poncha means punch, okay? Uh, the tool is also known as caradinho, and the poncha is made from aguardiente, that is cane sugar spirit, from Madeira, sugar, and citrus. That cocktail sounds like very familiar for tropical drinks, right? So, the Portuguese says that the caipirinha comes from poncha and the modeling technique from the use of the mexalote. So, at some point, swizzles also work like for modeling. You can model with this, okay? In, the, in our case, we usually model mint or like softer fruit, but we can model with this, okay? So, and we have a relationship with the caipirinha too, at some point, okay? So, it's a model drink, caipirinha is a model drink. If you go to Mexico, you're gonna find the chicole. So the chicole is the Mayan tool to mix cocoa beverages, okay? Beverages with chocolate. Um, it's mainly used for hot drinks, but the chicole is also used to do atoles and champurrados, okay? So here uh, you can see part of the connection with the, with the cuisine and the food, okay? Uh, the chicole is one of my favorite uh, swizzle sticks because uh, it has these notches with rings and it, they have movement. I can say that it's kind of a weapon, you know? If you see it, it's like it's a bit like this and uh, you can use it to down fruit from, from trees, okay? It sounds like weird? No, not at all. I've been in the jungle, I've been in, the, in part of the Amazonas and when I get to one of these caserios, the houses where the natives live, they give me a long stick you know, with uncla, with nail. So that's what we use to take fruits. I must say that I'm very good at that. I did it on my first chance. Um, so the, the chicoli was used also for this. And again, probably was a, was a tool. Mayans, they were not too aggressive. Uh, the Aztecs were a little more aggressive. Uh, but yes, definitely this was a tool. You can use it in the bar. You get, you know, if you need to. Okay, so mainly it's made in Oaxaca, Michoacán, and Puebla, and the wood used to, the, to make the chicoli comes from the cacahuananche tree. Okay. A lot of people say that the chicoli, oh, they call it molinillo, but the molinillo was the Spanish took on the Mayan tool. Okay, when they start to mix the cacao with milk and sugar, so. The Molinillo, it's in fact the Colombian Molinillo, okay? It was made first by the Antioqueños. So in, Ant in Antioquia, in Colombia, is where Colombians do the Aguardiente. So the Aguardiente, that is the national spirit from Colombia, Colombians put to the, to the name to, the, to their, their national spirit, the name of the, of the category, okay? So Aguardiente, means spirit. So the national spirit is called spirit. Okay? Okay, so, but not confusing too much. So the national spirit from Colombia, where the Molinillo 
was made first time, it's a cane sugar spirit too. Okay, so again, sizzles are related to sugar, to cane sugar spirit. All right. So um, it's made from a very soft wood called cucharo. You can see the cucharo, the cucharo wood here. So this is a molinillo. It's, it's very popular in Colombia. You can find it pretty much in all markets. Okay, I have like a smaller version for it. So you can use it, you know, in a highball glass. Uh, all of you guys are invited to come here and see the, see the swizzles and we, we can talk a little bit more about it. So it's a pretty easy wood to be treated. Uh, and it's, it's called cuchado. Cuchado because they also use it to make wooden cucharas, wooden spoons, right? Uh, the cuchado, it's, a, it's family from the rubiacea, that is a sister of the chinchona. Chinchona, or the chinchona bark, it's the quinin or quinina, okay? And quinin is the ingredient of tonic water. So, again, we still, we keep finding, you know, connections with the spirits, and now I'm beverages world, okay? So this is the descendant of the Mexican Molinillo. Then we have the Chaperito. The Chaperito is from Peru, okay? You can find a Chaperito like the one I have on my hand, okay? This is a Chaperito. In the north of Peru, in the middle of the Amazonas. If you want to get a Chaperito, you will need two days uh, to get into El Porvenir Pelejo, that it's into the Alto Amazonas zone. So not easy Swizzle to find, but this is the living um, proof that Swizzle sticks are, are uh, widely extended also in South America, okay? So this is a tool that belongs not just to the Caribbean, also to South America and to the world, yeah? And let's go to the other point of the world. The Dal Gutni, so also known as Dal Gutni. So the Dal Gutni is a cooking utensil uh, used in the local East Indian cuisine to make dal. So dal is a dish made from from peas, from uh, lentils. Okay. So when you get these lentils cooked, you use the dal to break them. Okay. In fact, well, in Trinidad we have a big influence from the East Indian cuisine. So we use it to make the kalalu, that it's a Caribbean dish from, made from vegetables, okay? Usually it's made from pine wood because it's odorless and it's light to maneuver. And you can find it also in different shapes and sizes. So this one is one of my favorites. I think it's beautiful. And uh, I think that if you can put your hands on one of these, uh, it's a very interesting tool to use. In fact, you can make it yourself. I mean, if you get some pine wood, you can cut it and put, put a stick on it and you can make your own sizzle stick, okay? So, let's talk about the sizzles and the cocktails. So far, we're good. Is there any question? I saw you all like, very como callados, like not, not talking. Uh, are, are we good? We good? Perfect. I think you're thirsty, guys. So, we're gonna start to make some cocktails and um, are we gonna talk about swizzles and cocktails? So the swizzle stick. So the tool makes its debut in modern cocktails in the light in the late 1860s when ice began to be available in the Caribbean. It's a tool used to mix liquids and make foam. That's why in Colombia and in Mexico they use it for chocolate because chocolate and milk, milk makes nice foam. So usually when you use the tool to mix a drink, you will achieve certain texture, you will make some effervescence. If you got pineapple, you're gonna get a beautiful pineapple foam. You know, if you get coffee on your swizzle, you're gonna make also a beautiful foam. And uh, it's very easy, easy to use. You're gonna grab the shaft of the tool, you know, between your palms, you're just gonna rub it in, like if you're making fire, okay? We will turn on the we will turn on the world on fire, Switzerland. And you guys are the ones that are going to help us. Okay, so but this is not just a tool. In the book of 1892 years in the French West Indies, Lafcadio Ern, who was a very famous journalist in that time, 
he makes the first English reference to the famous tea punch, that is the national drink of Martinique. In this book, he writes not only about the petit punch, he also uh, writes about the cocoyage uh, made by his Creole housekeeper using the baton liné. So this cocoyage was kind of a, let's say, eggnog, okay? Because it was cane sugar spirit, sugar, and egg, okay? Uh, we have a very traditional beverage in the Caribbean called punch cream, okay? So it's kind of a punch, creamy, is egg and cream on it. But why I'm saying it's not just a tool, because it's also a cocktail structure. The tea punch was, is the first cocktail still made today in, let's say, modern cocktail culture using a swizzle stick, okay? So the tea punch is not more than a simple deployment of ingredients that will become then the holy trinity of cocktails, rum, lime, and sugar, like the poncha, okay? Like the caipirin, like the daiquiri. But there's one thing about the tea punch. So tea punch, it's punch. It's not swizzle. There is one cocktail that can that has the last name on it. You know, the last name we say the apeshio. I think it's fine. Last name, you know, that it's that's a cocktail that changed everything. That changed uh, the way we understand Swizzles. This cocktail will give rise to a new structure that it's as important as sour juleps or fizzes. Okay, and this cocktail, it's a. Uh, historically associated to the tool that give rise. So, the Queen's Park uh, was one of the most famous hotels in the Caribbean at the beginning of the, of the 20th century. It opened in Trinidad in the late uh, 800s, uh, to be exact, it's uh, January 16, 1896, and became a passing touring attraction for Hollywood stars and British royalty. So, this is the birthplace of the Queen's Park Swizzle. 1920s was the golden age of hotel bars, all right? And, uh, you know, people was, was leaving the uh, United States for, because of prohibition, and a lot of, a lot of Americans used to go to Caribbean islands, okay? Trinidad was on one of these Caribbean islands, so, this hotel gave birth to the Queen's Park Swizzle. It's not, it was in London, it was in New York, it was in Paris, it was Port Spain. So in this particular place of the world, something very important happened to cocktail history. The Queen's Park Swizzle was the cocktail served as a welcome drink. So a swizzle, it's always a welcoming drink. Okay, I, I like to see it that way. We don't know who created the cocktail. We are not sure about this. Probably the um, recipe, or I mean, the person who created the drink uh, was lost, you know, uh, with the swing tongues and the feather headbands uh, of the people dancing uh, Calypso and Trinidadian music. But fortunately, the recipe survived. And 20 years after, uh, the Dirty Jeans Swizzle Club, the was very important night club in Trinidad, was serving Queen's Park Swizzle and featuring some of the most important performers of Calypso, Steampan, and even Caribbean music. So Mighty Sparrow, Lord Superior, even Buena Vista Social Club used to play in that in that nightclub, and people used to dance, drinking Queen's Park Swizzles. So, this was a booming hot spot for local and foreigners as alike. But, let's talk how the Queen's Park Swizzle moved to the next level. So, in 1946, Trader Spick discovered the cocktail. And when he discovered this drink, he says that the Queen's Park Swizzle was the most delightful form of anesthesia given out today. So things went crazy. The cocktail was featured into the tiki menu of his many Polynesian themed restaurants and bars. 
So everybody started to know in America the Queen's Court Swiss. And it's not just that, it's the cocktail start to be linked to the tiki movement, to the tropical, to the vintage tropical cocktails movement. So a lot of people think that the Queensburg Swizzle is a tiki drink, but it's not. It's a tropical drink that was brought by the tiki movement to be a staple, you know, of all these uh, pollination drinks. Okay? So, sadly, when the tiki movement fade, the cocktail also fade. But since the, there's now a revival about tiki drinks, the Queen's Purse Swizzle is back, and is back with the two. So, now we, we're gonna have our Queen's Purse Swizzle, so we're gonna talk a little about the technique, and we're gonna finish making one Queen's Purse Swizzle. So, to swizzle, all it takes is you take the swizzle between your thumbs, as, as we talked before, and move and make this movement, okay? Like going up and down, all right? So you get a very nice cold drink, uh, foaming and well mixed, okay? In some point, a, a, a swizzle stick works like an immersion, immersion blender. So this is like a blender, okay? It was the old blender of the natives, you know, before electricity, before blenders. So it's more intense than steering, but less than shaking. What this did mean? That um, this is a cocktail technique, all right? Uh, so as you might know, a few years ago, let's say 10 or 12 years ago, the Cuban roll come back. You know, people is rolling cocktails now. But this was an old technique. It comes from Cuba, you know, and from the Spanish cantineros living in Cuba. And now it's back. So now you shake, you stir, you use blender, and you do rolling, okay? But nobody is talking about swizzling, and we need to start to talk about swizzling. So now we don't just shake, we don't just stir, or we don't just blend the cocktail or rolling. We also swizzle it, okay? Because when you swizzle, you get your cocktail cool almost into a frost point. Uh, you get the perfect dilution. You add oxygen to the ingredients. And at the same time, you awake the citrus and the aromas to the surface of the cocktail. Okay? So swizzling is a technique that will complement very well with other techniques. For example, if you use it with egg whites, you can pretty much avoid the dry shake, okay? I swizzle everything. I swizzle all fashions, all right? Without the ice. I put the ingredients and I swizzle it, so I blend, I eat oxygen, I awake aromas, and then I add the ice, I turn my swizzle back, and I stir, okay? So I, I use the, the technique for uh, both things. So this is the Quint Park Swizzle, and so you are having it, we're gonna make you one so we can show the technique for you guys. So to make a Quint Park Swizzle, and to make a Swizzle in general, you will need a nice high bolt glass. This is, this is gonna be like the perfect glass to do it. Uh, I'm gonna bring some mint and ice, so we're gonna show you this very quick. So, we're gonna do the Queen's part. So for the Queen's part swizzle, you will need mint. So I'm going to put some mint on the base of the cocktail, of the, of the glass. Usually we have this saying, that is uh, about the Queen's part swizzle, that is clap it, crush it, pour it, swizzle it. Okay, so you, you always clap it, We'll wake up the mint. We got it? So I have the cocktail ready here, you know. This is like television time, so we have to do it fast. 
but uh, you're gonna add between half, three quarters, or one ounce of lime and, and demerara sugar. It depends on your taste, okay? You can do it a little sweeter or a little drier, okay? So we add uh, seven years old Angostura rum. This is the ingredient to do a Queen's Park swizzle, okay? So we add this to the glass. I'm gonna use a swizzle to help. Usually you do it three quarters of the glass, the three quarters. So you left a little space for swizzling and to add the Angostura aromatic bitters. So, as I told you, this is a very easy technique. You are all industry people, bartenders. Uh, so, I'm gonna choose this one that is my favorite swizzle. This is a Trinidadian swizzle. So, I'll take the tool, I push through the ice, okay? And then, I start to do this. You usually go up and down with the movement. You can do it with both hands, or you can do it like just one hand, you know, like this. And uh, as the chief mixologist of our house says, you need to move your hip a little with the rhythm of the swizzle, because if you don't do that, you're not putting enough swizzle to it, okay? So you usually do this movement, okay? We will need some calypso or some music, okay? So there we go, this is swizzling. Remember that you cannot do it too strong, because if you do it too strong, you will break the mint, okay? Okay, I know you can hear here, but there's a beautiful sound about swizzling. It's like when you shake, you know, you shake and you... With the swizzle you do the same. Uh, we usually do it with some maracas, so it's like... And you listen? Something like that, okay? So, if you have nice pebble eyes and you have a thin highball glass, you will get some frost. You will see, we will get it here. Here we go. So, this is the way I do. You can put more ice and add the Angostura up, or you just add the Angostura in this moment, from six to eight dashes. So it's a generous amount of Angostura. Never enough Angostura in cocktails, just keep adding dashes. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm gonna do two more. Oh, well, you got it. So, and then you add some more ice. It has to be pebble. It's very hard to do a swizzle technique with another ice that is not pebble or crushed. So when we talk about pebble ice, we talk about these beautiful diamond, diamonds, okay? And then you just garnish with some more mint leaves trying to make a beautiful landscape like the Queen Park Savannah landscape in front of the Queen's Park Hotel and you need to use a straw to enjoy the Queen's Park Swizzle. So this is the Queen's Park Swizzle. This is the father of swizzles. Okay, so this was the first swizzle. All the swizzles that come after come from here, as all bitters that come after Angostura uh, have the bitter, that bitter as the father of bitters, okay? So this is for you guys, thank you so much. If you have some questions, this is the moment. So thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed our, our presentation. So can we use like one moment if somebody has a question? Very fast. Yes. I was just curious about, what about washing your swizzle? Washing your swizzle? You can wash it. If you can use, yeah, you can use. Like a rinse? I will, I will, I will suggest, this is for you guys. You got, okay. When you, when you share it? No? I, I'll drink it if you don't want it. Oh, nobody wants this one? Ah, ha, ha, I knew that somebody would. So, if you want to wash it, try to use the soap that has no, like neutral, like neutral soap, okay? But usually with water it should be fine, okay? Another question? Yes. 